Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be learning a Clem build order because this kid is just really good. It's going to be his early Hellbat attack versus Serral that he did at IEM Katowice. This is a really brutal, fast build and it's a bit of a difficult one as well. So if you're up to the challenge, let's get started. Start off with the typical rallying of your first SCV to the front. Supply Depot. Barracks. Refinery. Fill up your gas. With the barracks finished, start up your orbital and immediately get a reactor. Grab your natural command center on 19. Build your second supply depot at the front. Orbital done, start producing SCVs again. Reactor is done, start producing Marines. The factory. Get your natural orbital. Swap your factory onto your barracks reactor. Grab an armory. Start up Hellions. Produce Marines single now from the barracks. Get a supply depot. From here on, do not get supply blocked. It's on you. Get a tech lab on the barracks. Move out with your marines first. And then just rally your factory across the map. Start up stim back at home. You should be approaching the zerg's third at this point. With your armory done, transform your hellions into hellbats. And start your push at 345. Or hit your push, I should say, at hit at 345. Get a third CC back at home. Keep producing Hellions back at home and keep producing Marines while trying to get as much damage done. If it's starting to get cleaned up, just use your Hellions like you normally would to clear up creep. Back at home, grab two barracks and your second refinery. Get your third refinery.
Get your starport. Swap the factory onto uh, its own reactor. Build a new reactor with it. Fill up all your gases. Get a fourth refinery. And now you're going to be looking to build up to two medevacs and as many marines as possible into wood of mines. The usual stuff. But Serral does a uh, an attack at that point. So that's the base build order. Let's go into the build order discussion. So the strengths, it's a very rare opener that will surprise the opponent. It's rare because the actual potency of this build is kind of in question. The non-stop aggression is just something that even good zergs will, will struggle against. They just won't expect so many attacks so quickly and, and so one after the other. If you don't get attacked yourself, you can do the Hellbat build into a very quick stim. Uh, double medevac follow-up into more, you know, double medevac drops. It just it keeps on going. Uh, it's a high skill cap, so this is one of those builds where I would suggest if you're new to Terran that you do not use. It's not particularly just well set up to, to teach you the mechanics of the matchup because it is it requires so much effort. It requires so much multitasking to really work and, and so much being on the ball when it comes to the build order. So... It's something to challenge yourself with, and it's a lot of fun when you feel comfortable enough to do it, but uh, let's put it as a strength for now that there's a very high skill cap. Still provides early game protection to a degree. Um, getting reactor first is obviously not a very good scouting tool. <laughs> you don't have a Reaper. Uh, you could probably fit in an SCV scout just because we're not professionals. We're not Clem, who needs every single second, every single mineral, uh, and is the utmost importance, but... It does provide some early marines against like a, a, a moderate ling flood, and it gets hellions still at like an okay time. I guess it would say that in the early, early stages, this is not particularly good, but in the early, as in like, you know, um, four and a half, four, four to five minutes, like let's say around there, then it's where it's okay. You do continue producing hellions. So you don't just, you know, shoot all your Hellions out, have them turn to Hellbats, they all die, and then you're screwed because back at home you're transferring over into barracks. No, we saw Clem actually continue producing Hellions, so we did a Hellbat push into Hellion control into the double medevac drop. So, yeah, early, early, maybe not the best protection, but uh, let's say early four to five minutes, it's, it's pretty okay. Uh, weaknesses, there's no scouting, I already went over that, so no Reaper. Uh, again, an SCV scout can be fit in just if you're uh, a pleb out there. <laughs> if you're looking to do exactly what Clem does, though, you are going to have to skip the SCV scout. Uh, it's lack of early Hellion count can hurt against Ling Swells, so like, if, you know, having four to six Marines is an okay start, and make sure to put them on that ramp as well, in case there is a Ling Flood. But when you're only at two Hellions or a zero, and they Ling Flood you, yeah, you're, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. If they Ling Bailing bust you, you know, you're, you're actually probably dead. Doesn't necessarily give you a huge advantage. In this game, uh, Serral just you know, had to micro back his queens for a modern amount of time and managed to deal with it okay. The real power of this was that Clem could do that into Hellion control, into drops, into drops, into a push, because the guy is so crazy fast. So unlike a Hellbat push that comes with six and a medevac full of four marines, something like that, right? This is not necessarily going to give you the, the easiest win. I would say that if the Zergs are, let's say, they are, um, they avoid micro. <laughs> I don't want to use the word bound. But if they avoid micro, then maybe you can get an instant win from this because they don't have enough queens. They let their queens all bulk up. They don't have larva. You know, the, all, all those things. Then maybe you can get a couple of quick wins. But this is actually more of a, like a, a tempo base opener almost. It is more so about the swift bio follow-up is the last point. So it's not about the free easy one with the Hellbats uh, necessarily since there's so few of them, but uh, there is an off chance that it'll snowball to something really big. It is more just about keeping that pressure up on your opponent. So some tips and tricks for the build. Don't spend time on the third base of your opponents. Hit the natural hard and fast. So. You can see that in this video, Clem saw the third hatchery, which is in a bit of like a triangle forward position a bit on Lightshade, and he just skipped it. Um, you have four to six marines, you have two hell hellbats, that's not going to kill a hatchery very quickly. And it's going to give your opponent a lot of time to react, so you just won't do any damage. And there's not even anything at the third. You know, it's, it's done, but there's not going to be many drones or any at all. So that's not the goal. 
The goal is to hit the natural because there's very little creep spread. There's very few queens. There's probably only going to be the first four lings, the anti-reaper lings, as opposed to the uh, like 16 lings they'll build around more of the hellion, six hellion timing. So you want to hit that as hard as possible, as fast as possible, and hopefully even catch the queens before they have time to react. Um, in fact, if you can on certain maps or against certain opponents and their, and their choice of third base, you want to try and avoid being scattered until you're hitting the natural. Until you're hitting that first creep tumor, right? And then they will have as little time as possible to react. Continue pressure with Hellions after the Hellbat push. And this is, I would say, pretty critical. The Hellbats will go down. It's pretty much inevitable. There's just so few of them. But the Hellions can still provide a lot of extra pressure. The queens have had to micro, they've had to maybe spend a transfuse if they've got one. They want to quickly back get back to injecting after all the chaos. So the Hellions now have an even easier or a higher chance of, of actually doing their job, which is taking out building creep tumors and stopping the queens from just roaming around willy-nilly. And they're still important scouting tools. So in Clem's case, actually, his Hellions, they I think they retreated back home um, because there was only two of them. He kind of scouted once with them and then returned home, I think is what happened. So he actually kind of missed that Sarah was building a ton of Ling and Bane Ling outside of his natural, which, uh, you know, that's the one thing really I could critique him on, is that maybe if he had been more present with his Hellions and taken into account that that is a possibility, he would have scouted it. I think it was just such a low counter possibility, especially with a guy like Sarah that Clem didn't even think about it. But anyways, the, um... The pressure of the Hellions afterwards is, is arguably more important. Do you keep in mind you want to be careful if you only have two or four Hellions? Six is the real sweet spot for microing, that even if you kind of mess up microing, you're not particularly good at it, it still will do the damage. So just keep that in mind, as Clem did, and uh, they are important. They're, they're scouting, they're defense, and when you're comfortable, they can be used to control. Well, not attack necessarily, but they can be used to control and harass. Keep Hellions alive for an attack with the first level drop. So again, those Hellions can be so useful in so many different ways. The first Hellbot attack is done and over. The Hellions afterwards clean up a couple of creep tumors, keep tabs on the opponent, make sure they get to get a couple of lings to defend against them. And then they don't really do much else. That's fine. You turn them into Hellbats with your first push and that's still pretty damn helpful. Six more Hellbats uh, after the, let's say it goes Hellbats into Hellion pressure, into double medevac drop, into a push with also six to eight additional Hellbats. Uh, that, is, that is quick. That's a lot of pressure. And that is also going to be uh, forcing them to have a decent amount of bailings, which if they're under so much pressure, they might not have. And then six Hellbats is incredible against someone who's only ha only has lings, is only just now building bailings. So, I mean, it, it sounds kind of odd, but the real goal of this build is how is, is learning how to use your Hellions and how to keep up the pace with those Hellions. So again, a difficult build, as generally in other builds you have against Zerg, you can kind of sit at home a little bit more, do a moderate amount of scouting, and then have enough Hellions that if they do an attack, hopefully you can go ahead and defend. But in this one, you got to be more active on the map. You actually have to send your units outside. You have to have your build really well behind it so that you have enough Marines to continue up the pressure because they're not going to be in a particularly fantastic spot if those first Hellbats really don't do a whole lot. So it's um, it's one of those builds where, I don't know, reach for the stars, guys. <laughs> if you want to be like Clem, this is one of the most Clem builds that we saw at Katowice, it was just, it was so fast, it was so multitasking based, and that's what that guy's really good at. So it's a perfect way to, I guess, expand on your Terran play if you're looking to get into bio, and then, then some really look to increase your multitasking and be like your favorite player, Clem. This is a build that I feel like actually defines him <laughs> to a certain extent. So hopefully you guys have fun with it at the very least because that is ultimately the goal in StarCraft, is to have fun. So even if you didn't clobber with this build, if you're having fun, don't even worry about it. Just keep doing it. And on the note of getting clobbered, if you do have any more questions about this build or any other that's on this channel, then feel free to stop by my stream on Fridays. 
starting at 2 p.m. EST, where I do subscriber replays as well as a little bit of ladder with a newbie friendly focus. All, all both of those newbie friendly focus. So come in, ask questions, and hopefully get better at StarCraft. I'll see you guys next week for another build order tutorial.